infinity! Just love the takeoffs, don't you? And beyond! With the voices recorded, Whoa. the editor puts together a version of the movie using only story sketches. From here on, the computer process differs from the way animation has been made for the last century. No more drawing, tracing, or painting. Instead, computer animators manipulate quickly rendered polygons, then send each frame through the incredibly complex computer process of overlaying shaders of color, texture maps, and reflectivity as they're rendered one frame at a time. Whoa! But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Every setting, toy, and prop starts out as a hand-drawn design created by art director Ralph Eggleston and the art department. The colors and mood of the scenes were defined in the pastel drawings and concept paintings many years before they ever came to life on the big screen. The approved designs are assembled into model packs that serve as a blueprint for the technical directors who construct objects inside the computer. Then, computer art leaves traditional hand-drawn animation in the dust, as the almost 2,000 computer-generated models used in the film are built from scratch using wireframe geometry completely within virtual reality. <gasps> My ship! Blast! This will take weeks to repair. Buzz light your mission. To get believable organic curves and human shapes like those in Buzz's face, actual three-dimensional clay statues were sculpted and then scanned into the computer. This handheld 3D digitizer translates the object into data the computer can interpret by connecting the surface dots. Once the shape of the model is mapped into the computer, it can be viewed from every perspective. Layout artists are the cinematographers of animation. They arrange the models into position and choose interesting camera angles to heighten the drama and action. The stagings can be moved and manipulated beyond what real cameras can do, taking us right through the ceiling if need be. Sometimes it's fun to borrow a classic shot, like in this homage to the rolling boulder scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Buzz! Buzz! One of the things that makes Toy Story so unique is the collaboration between traditionally trained artists and animators and these computer, amazing computer geniuses. Together, they developed some of the most complex moving shapes ever generated by computers. Yet sometimes you could find them consulting motion studies made a hundred years ago. The points of this grid, called articulated variables, or AVARs for short, are used by animators to make Scud run in a reusable cycle. Supervising animator Pete Docter helped new animators trade their pencils and paint for a keyboard and mouse. To move Woody, I just move the controls. This is his elbow. I can move his elbow up or down. The next one down is the wrist. I can move his wrist however I want him to look. I think if you can actually make it work and read and communicate without any facial expressions, without the use of, of uh, you know, your, your face, then you've done a really successful job. So actually what we tried to do is get everything to read just in the acting, the pantomime, and then when you stick the face on, it'll only plus that. Buzz, look at Alien! Where? Ah! <laughs> the trick of good animation acting is getting the audience to believe that the toys have emotions and a mind of their own. To achieve this, supervising technical director Bill Reeves gave Woody over 700 animation controls, 212 in his face, including 58 for his mouth alone. <laughs> we were like pioneers, and it was so exciting. Every day you would go to work, and there would be like something new on the monitor, on the screen, and you're like, wow, that's great. All right, man, let's move, 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 move. One of the great moments in Toy Story is the Green Army Man scene. Everybody knows these toys. There's a few, you know, basic characteristics that we, that we had to have. One, gun barrels always bent. 
Two, they have the mold flashing, the bits of extra plastic around their head. Three, their feet are attached to the base. So if, when we were putting Green Army Men in our film, we had to have those three things. In order to capture realistic movement for the Green Army Men, the animation staff took turns hobbling around the office with their shoes nailed to a board. Believe it or not, they got paid for doing this. While all this is going on, Ralph Eggleston and his amazing staff designed all the sets in the film. I mean, we're talking about the neighborhood, the street, the trees, the leaves on the trees, the houses. One of our favorite settings in the film was Sid's room. He's a bad kid of the film. He's sort of like a, a, a Dr. Frankenstein of the toy world. The human characters provided animators with some of their greatest challenges. Computer scientists figured out how to give skin an oily texture and how to layer 15,000 individual hairs. Piecing Sid together meant balancing reality and caricature in a way that would do justice to the first all-computer animated screen villain. We all agreed that Sid was the kind of kid who would grow up to be an animator. Oh, great idea. <laughs> I burned her head the other day with a magnifying glass. Did you glass. really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Tried to burn her leg. Details such as the burn mark on Woody's head were created with shaders, literally an overlay of texture which the computer wraps onto existing animation. Other examples of these shaders include the scratches which cover Sid's desk, the shiny aluminum surface of the air duct, and the rough graininess of the asphalt of the street. In fact, every color, texture, and pattern is a shader, right down to the reflections in Buzz's helmet and the decals on his suit, details too time-consuming and expensive to be drawn frame by frame in cell animation. Lighting was accomplished by breaking the shot down into the various light sources, then combining them until the desired effect was achieved. Only then is a shot ready for final rendering, where a specially invented digital film printer takes over from the humans and combines the shapes, colors, and effects for each of the 110,000 frames. This is how they created the first all-digital motion picture. It's getting on my nerves. Are you saying you want to lodge a complaint with Star Command? Oh, 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 with millions okay. of bits of data safely recorded on film, it was time to work on the soundtrack. Oh, yeah? With Disney animated films, they're always musicals. And um, the music and ours, we wanted to be slightly different. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Which instead of the characters breaking out into song, we have the songs that are written about the emotion of the moment in, in the film, but it's sung by Randy Newman. You just remember what your old past said. Boy, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Grammy winner Randy Newman also wrote the score and conducted Toy Story's 97-piece orchestra on the same stage where The Wizard of Oz and Singing in the Rain were recorded. You can't treat it as if, exactly as if it were a real picture. I mean, there's stuff you have to catch, you know, you know. You know, if, if something happens like that. By the fall of 1995, the only process left was to mix the final audio. On most movies, sounds are recorded live on the set. For Toy Story, there was only silence. They're here! Birthday guests at 3 o'clock! Stay oh! calm, everyone! I didn't hear anything that time. We've been listening to the music sound designer Gary Rydstrom had to create unique sound effects for each individual character. <laughs> Then he expertly layered them. They're here! Birthday guests at 3 o'clock! Stay calm, everyone! Uh, meeting adjourned. Toy Story was set for a Thanksgiving 1995 release, and as the date neared, the volume of work exploded. What had started as a series of hand-drawn pencil sketches was evolving into a finely layered masterpiece. 
In the end, over 800,000 hours of machine time would be required to render the final elements for the 77 minutes of film. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's <laughs> good. When we were starting Toy Story, we knew that we would probably be making the first computer animated feature film. When it got animated, it was even more exciting. But nothing prepared us for the step that it took after, after it got fully rendered. My jaw was on the floor. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I mean, I directed the movie. I knew what was coming up, and I couldn't believe how amazing it looked. You know, Disney himself blew audiences' minds when he really took the idea of drawing cartoons um, and raised it to this true art form. And I think this is the next version of that. And I think that's uh, in the grand Walt Disney tradition. As to the future of computer animation, perhaps the toys sum it up best. To infinity and beyond! Everybody's going to notice and talk about the fact that this is the very first computer animated feature film. But the computers are just tools. They didn't create this picture, it's the people that created the picture.